Okay, what you're going to learn in this tutorial is how to make an infinite scrolling background as you see here. You're going to learn how to animate the player so it animates as it goes up and down. You're also going to learn how to make a particle system that moves along with the player as it moves around. You can get the sprites for the player by going to littleguyscgi.com. You'll just, uh, on the site, go to Game Visuals by clicking on this link. Scroll down, click on Game Assets. Scroll down and then you can just click on uh, where you see Vehicles and Mechs. Uh, these sprites will be provided to you free of charge. You'll just click on here and uh, you'll be taken to a place where you can download these sprites. Hi, this is Ali Arango for Game Visuals as well as LittleGuyCGI.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make an infinite side-scrolling background in GDevelop 5. So let's get started. Okay, with these tutorials, I like to start off as much as I can from a blank, uh, or usually from a blank slate. So what you're looking at is a the, or the startup screen for GDevelop. We're going to select Create a New Project. We're going to scroll down, we're going to select empty game. And then once we did that, we see this menu to the left pop up. We're going to click this plus button underneath scenes. I'm going to left click there and then I'm going to select new scene. Okay. Once I did that, we see this menu here or, or this scene pop up here. We're going to look to the right. We're going to click the uh, plus button here. We're then going to select Sprite. We're going to change the name from the object name from new object to space. We're then going to click this button to the, this uh, plus button to the right. We're then going to click the plus button to the left. We're going to go to where our background object is. I'm going to select the space background. I'm going to left click here. I'm then going to click open. And then the rest of uh, these settings here are fine. So I'm going to click apply. Okay, what I'm going to do now is left click on space. You can see it's highlighted blue. Now that it's highlighted blue, I'm going to left click and drag this out to our work area here. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel back. You can see this black border here. This is the border for our game. I'm going to left click and drag this space so it's uh, overlapping that black border. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel back. I'm holding my middle mouse button to scroll the uh, screen to the left. I'm going to left click on the space background, right click, then select copy. I'm then going to right click, then select paste. And now we have this uh, duplicate of our background here. So I'm just lining this up so they're side to side. I'm going to left click, so left click here so I'm deselected on that uh, copied space background. Okay, in GDevelop, often you'll bring sprites onto your main work area, and typically you'll resize those sprites. If you resize the sprite and then you want to have uh, another sprite be the same size as the resize sprite, you can do just like we did here where I copied the uh, sprite object and then pasted that sprite object. Okay, in G develop, this is where we work on our art assets. We're going to go to uh, where we program now. So we're going to go to the near the top of the screen. We're going to left click here. And then what we're going to do is go to this button here. We're going to click plus. Once we did that, we can see this add condition as well as this add action uh, option. In G develop, add conditions. Uh, when you add conditions, is basically when you tell G develop when something happens. When you add an action, you basically tell G develop what to do when something happens. Okay, we're going to add our first condition. So we're going to hover over this add condition. We're going to left click. We're going to go to scene. We're then going to select at the beginning of the scene. And then we're going to click OK. Okay, now we're going to add an action. So we're going to select add action. We're going to go to variables. We're going to select right here. And then where we see this right here, we're going to click the, uh, when I say here, I mean where we see variable, we're going to click this uh, blue button. We're going to click this plus button to the right. We're going to change this name to scroll capital S 
speed. We're going to leave everything else how it is. We're going to click apply. Now we're going to left click where we see variable. We're going to select scroll speed. We're going to click here. We're going to change this to equals uh, set to. And then for here, this setting, we're going to enter in one. We're then going to click, I'm going to left click to deselect there. Now I'm going to click OK. Okay, see how this uh, these two uh, settings, the add conditions as well as add action are highlighted. See how there's a blue underline under both of them? If I click here, you don't see that underline. It's just around here. You want this blue underline to be under add condition as well as add action. So if I click here, you can see that. And uh, once you have that blue outline, you want to click plus. And this will, what this does is this adds a new event for you to work with in GDevelop. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to click on this event here, and then we're going to go to add condition. We're going to go to common conditions for all objects. We're going to go to position. We're going to go to where we see compare exposition of an object. We're going to left click there. We're going to select space. For the sign of the test, we're going to go to less than or equal to. And then for this exposition, what we're going to do is we're going to click this blue button. We're going to scroll up to common expressions for all objects. We're going to left click there. We're going to go to size, left click there. Then we're going to select width and then left click there. So for the object, we're going to left click here. We can see space. We're going to left click there. Now we're going to click done. Then we're going to click OK. OK, this thing I'm going to show you here is extremely important. If you don't do this one thing I'm about to show you, what this this uh, your your screen will not scroll. This will not work. So what you want to do is left click where you see space. You're going to click to the front of this space dot with parentheses, parentheses, and you're just putting a minus symbol in the front and then you're going to left click. So you can see that minus symbol. You need to have that minus symbol or what I'm showing you in this tutorial will not work. So make sure you have that minus symbol. Okay, what we're going to do is add in action to this event. So we're going to click add action. We're going to go to common action for all objects. We're going to go down to position. We're going to select exposition of an object. That object that we want to work with is space. For the modification sign, we're going to set this to equals. And then for this setting, what we're going to do is go to the blue button. And what we're going to do is go to common expression for all objects. We're going to go to size. And then we're going to select width. Then when we see this pop up, uh, we're going to left click here, select space. Then we're going to select done. Then we're going to select OK. OK, we want to add another event. So we're going to make sure we have this highlighted blue. When I say highlighted blue, I'm talking about this line that's going around the condition as well as the action. We're going to click this plus button here. Now we have this new event to work with. We're going to left click on that new event. OK, uh, I had told you before that when you work with a condition, that's it's basically you're telling G develop when something happens and action says, you know, what to do when that something happens. When you don't put a condition here, pretty much this action, since it doesn't have, in, have you telling uh, G develop a specific time when to do this action, then G develop does this action for the most part all of the time. So that's what we want to happen in, in this case. So we're going to leave this condition uh, blank before we add our action. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to add an action for this event. So I'm going to left click here. I'm going to click add action. I'm going to go to common action for all objects. I'm going to go to position. I scroll down. I'm going to select exposition of an object. So I'm going to left click there. I'm going to select space. For the modification sign, I'm going to select subtract. For this setting here, I'm going to click the plus button. I'm going to scroll up, select variables. I'm then going to select right here. So I'm going to left click and then I'm going to left click here and then select scroll speed. I'm then going to select done and then I'm going to click OK. OK, with all that set up, what we're going to do is go to the near the top of the screen. I'm going to select the uh, preview button. I'm then going to left click. 
And now you can see we have our screen scrolling and what we want to do is watch this just to make sure that this continues scrolling. Okay, we have this small space right here. I'm going to click the X button to get out of the uh, preview window. Okay, we want to fix that space that we saw that should be fairly easy to deal with. Okay, to uh, deal with that, to uh, try to deal with that issue, we're going to click on this new scene. See this space right here? I'm going to zoom in so you can see this. Here's our border right here. So I have this first image not starting right off where our uh, border is. So what we're going to do is adjust this and hopefully this will fix the issue. Okay, so I'm going to zoom back. I'm going to take this copy, move that to the side. Here's the border right here. So I'm just taking the uh, the first space bright and I just now have this pretty much lined up with the border. I'm holding the middle mouse button to uh, pan the view. So see here's the border there so now it's lined up right there. So I'm holding the middle mouse button to pan the view. I'm going to take our second sprite. I'm just zooming in just to make sure I have this uh, This lined up. I'm going to zoom back. Okay, so now with that lined up, that should fix the issue. Okay, so let's click the preview button. So we're just letting the screen scroll. Okay, we can see a slight line right here. Okay, as far as having a, a line, these two pictures if there's any kind of overlap here like when I uh, if I take this image move this over this image see when I hover here you can kind of see there's a space right there when I click the preview button that overlap that you see the amount of overlap will be the basic size of the space that you'll see uh, appear as the image scrolls so it should be a fairly decent space. Okay, and there it is right there. Okay, we don't want that space. However, knowing how to have the space pop up is a good thing because then that lets us see how we can not have the uh, the space pop up. Yeah, I apologize for any lag that you see in the uh, the video. In that last video, there was a space that you could see. What I'm going to do is show you how to, you can avoid that. So one of the ways we can avoid having uh, a space with this technique is what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here, right click, select delete click here, right click, select delete. I'm going to go to the top of the uh, screen now and you see where we see this button that says toggle slash edit grid. I'm going to left click here then I'm going to select show grid. When we have, have this grid show we will automatically turn on snapping in GDevelop. So I'm going to left click on space now left click and drag this out. I'm going to line this uh, sprite up with the edge of our border here and it's a little hard to see that it's lined up with the uh, the border it is though 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, select copy, right click, select paste. And this, uh, this is snapping. Uh, this image is snapping our space bright. So what I'm going to do here is I want this to this sprite to be totally lined up with one of the uh, grid lines right here. It's not uh, lined up. So what I can do is with this selected on, I have this, uh, let me move this out of the way to make this easier to see. See this block when I left click and drag this. Now I adjusted the size of this uh, sprite. So now this is totally lined up with this grid line right here. So now I'm going to take this second copy image and then line this up. So now this is lined up right with uh, the line edge of the uh, grid line. So now with this setup, we should not have any concerns about having any kind of uh, visible spaces that spaces that we can see as we uh, have our infinite scrolling screen. So with this lined up, I'm going to go to this toggle slash uh, edit grid, turn that off by just unclicking this uh, check mark here. Okay, yeah, switched computers. We'll be able to get a smooth uh, scroll screen here. My wife generously uh, is letting me use her computer to make this tutorial. Uh, with that setup, I was expecting this to not uh, have a space. However, I'll show you this. I'm going to turn the grid back on. I'm going to move this back once. Whether I move it back or not, it doesn't seem to matter. When we play, there's going to be a, a space that pops up uh, that we don't want. The good news is the fix is fairly easy. I'm just waiting for it to pop up. There it goes right there. What the fix seems to be is I'm going to click here, right click, I'm going to select delete. With here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the grid back on. So I'll select show grid. I'm just going to make this longer like this. And then by making this longer, then right clicking this, selecting copy, then right clicking, and then selecting paste, lining this up. This seems to fix the issue. So now when I click uh, the preview, we shouldn't see any kind of a uh, space now. So we'll let this play. So I'm not sure why making it longer makes it take the space out. However, it, it, it works. Uh, as far as fixing the issue. So now we have an infinite scrolling background that should uh, just keep scrolling through. Just letting it go long enough to make sure that uh, there, there is no space. So yes, it looks like we're good. So I'm going to click the X button to come out of that preview that preview uh, window. Okay, so I'm going to click and then take this check mark away to turn off that grid. Let's add a player character so we have something to fly through this space. I'm going to click the plus button. I'm going to go to Sprite. I'm going to change this name to Player. I'm going to click the plus button to the right. Then I'm going to click the plus button to the left. I'm going to go to desktop. I'm going to select this idle pose here. I'm going to select open. I'm going to name this idle. 
I'm going to go to the plus button to the right, click there. I'm going to click the plus button to the left. Go back to desktop. I'm going to select this moving up. So here we have multiple frames. I'm going to hold control, press A. I'm then going to click open. I'm going to name this up. I'm going to click the plus button to the right, click the plus button to the left. So I'm going to uh, this moving down. I have these frames here. I'm going to hold control, press A. Then I'm going to click open. I'm going to change the name to this for change the name to down. We don't want these to loop. These are fine how they are. For the uh, behaviors, we're going to click on behaviors. Now we can see this purple line underneath behaviors. We're going to click this plus button to the right. What we want to select is top down movement. We're going to left click there. And then I'm going to turn off the uh, default controls. I'm also going to turn off rotate object. I'm then going to click apply. Okay, what we're going to do now is click on the player. So I left clicked, highlighted it, so it's highlighted blue. I'm going to left click, drag this onto the screen. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to pan the view. I'm going to zoom in. It's pretty big, so I'm going to hold shift, go to this corner square to scale that down like that. Okay, let's click the preview button to see how this looks. So there's our ship. However, since I turned off the default controls, we cannot see any movement from our ship. So I'm going to click this X button to turn off the preview button. So we set up our art in this screen. We set up our programming here. We're going to left click here. We're going to click this event. So this is, high, this is highlighted blue. We're going to click the plus button to add a new event and then click this uh, event right here. Okay, so what we want to do here is go to add condition, left click on condition. We want to go to keyboard. We want to select key pressed. And for this, we're going to left click here. Then we're going to type in U. Okay, it's going to be capital U. Then P. We're going to select up. Then we're going to click OK. OK, what we want to do now is go to add action. We want to go to top down movement. Go to controls. Then we want to press uh, simulate up key press. So we'll left click there. We want this for the player. So we'll left click on the player. We'll then click OK. Okay, now we want to add another action. So we're going to click on add action. We're going to go to sprite. We're going to select animations and images. We're going to select change the animation by name. We're going to select player. Uh, and what we're going to do here is we're going to left click. We named the uh, animation for up, up. So because we named it, we need to put that in quotations. So I'm going to hold shift, quotation, put it uh, up, hold shift, put in quotation again. I'm then going to click OK. OK, what we're going to do now is with this highlighted uh, blue and when I say this I mean this event you can see this uh, these blue blue outline going around the condition as well as the up action we're gonna click this button right here which is add a new empty event we're then going to right click select copy so I right clicked to select this whole event we're gonna left click on this new event then right click and then select paste so now we have this event copied and pasted to this event here. Okay, the reason why we did that was we have this work 
done here, we just need to change the buttons now, which is fairly easy to do. So I'm going to double click here where we see the up. I'm going to change this to down. I'm going to hold shift, press D. So then I'm going to left click on down. Left click here just to deselect. I'm then going to click OK. Okay, so now I'm going to double click here, where instead of having this say simulate pressing, uh, simulate up key press, we're going to select simulate down key press. We're then going to click OK. And then where we have this set up, set animation of player to up, we're going to double click here. And we're going to change this to quotation. down, quotation, we're then going to click OK. Okay, with all that done, let's click preview button and see if this works. That looks pretty good. Okay. I'm going to click the X button to get out of the preview. Okay, let's make it so our ship can go forward as well as back. So what we'll do is we'll click here, right click, select copy, left click here, right click, select paste. And then we'll right click and then select paste again. So. Uh, with this, what we're going to do is we'll set this so that when you press right, so hold shift, press R, and then right, we'll select right, we'll then click OK. Um, we have to simulate pressing up, we'll double click here, scroll down, we'll select simulate right key press, and then for the animation here, we'll Double click here. We want to change this to yeah, quotation idle. Hold shift, put quotation in. We'll then click OK. OK, so we'll click here. We'll change this to capital L. EFT, we'll select left, just left click here just to deselect, I'm going to click OK. Uh, we'll left click here, scroll down, we'll select simulate left key press, we'll then click OK, double click here, quotation, oh. Quotation, quotation, so we put in you know, quotation, idle, quotation, so with that uh, idle, uh, our animation name change to idle, we'll click OK. OK, so let's click the preview button and try this out. So we push down, we rotate down, we push up, we rotate up, so we can go forward. As well as back. Okay, I'm gonna click the X button to get out of that preview window. Okay, we're gonna set things up so that when we're not pressing up or down, that uh, the animation goes back to the idle pose, so I'm going to left click here. So instead of clicking the whole entire event, I'm just clicking right here. I'm going to right click, select copy, click here, hover over this add condition, right over the add condition. I'm going to paste, so I just pasted the up key instead of the whole event like we previously did. I'm going to double click here, and then I'm going to leave this at up, but see this invert condition? I'm going to left click here. So when we want 
this condition to be when the up key is not pressed for something to happen. Okay, and what we want to happen is for this to be set to the uh, idle pose. So I'm going to go here, right click, select copy, go right over this add action, add action, right click, select paste. So now we have this set animation of player to idle. So, well, this is fairly easy to do. So we'll click here. We'll click this add new event button. With this whole event highlighted, you can see because the uh, blue is uh, outlining the whole thing, we'll right click, select copy, left click here, then right click, select paste. So now we have this whole event copied to here. Okay, with that done, we'll double click here. We'll change this to down. We'll then click OK. Okay, and I'm th now that I'm thinking about this, uh, I'm going to double click here and I'm just going to change this to key released and I'm going to take away the invert condition. I think this is a better setup. So we'll select key released, take away the invert condition. So now let's click the preview button, see if this works. So we'll click up when we let go. That goes right back to the idle pose, which is what we want. Looks good. So I'm going to click the X button to get out of that preview window. Okay, let's add some exhaust for our player. So we're going to go to new scene. We're going to go to this plus button to the right. We're going to click that. We're going to go to particles emitter. Left click there. These are going to be the colors for our exhaust. We're going to click here. We're going to change this to this blue color. That's interesting. Okay. I had to click this blue color to get that to uh, go away. Okay. Uh, with this setup as it is, we're going to click Apply. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel to zoom in. Okay, we're going to left click on the new object. I'm going to double click here. I'm going to change the name to Exhaust. I'm then going to click Apply. Okay, I'm going to go to exhaust. I'm going to left click on exhaust, left click and drag this onto the screen. I'm then going to click the preview button so we can see what this does. So there's the exhaust right there. I'm going to close the preview uh, window. I'm going to double click on exhaust. Let's increase the size. So the size is here, this particle size start. So we'll change this to. 200. We want the exhaust not to be aimed to the right, but to be aimed to the left. So we, when we look at this maximum force, as well as the minimum force, we can put a minus symbol in front of these. This should have the exhaust change direction. And then for the cone, uh, let's change this to 25. So we'll click apply. We'll click the preview window. So we can now see the exhaust is coming back instead of forward and that's what we want. Okay, what we need to do now is have this exhaust move, move with our player. So what we need to do is we're going to left click on the player. I'm going to double click on the player now. We're going to look to the bottom of this menu here. We're going to select edit points. In here we can see we have an origin point as well as a center point already. We're going to look to the right. We're going to click this plus button here to make a new point. This point I'm going to put an E in front of it standing for exhaust point. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to left click here and then put in nine zero. I'm going to left click here, put in nine zero. The only reason why I'm putting these points in here was to move this uh, point that we just made to a place where we could see it easily. I can see it right there. So now that we can see it here, we're going to left click, drag this down. You can see when I drag this point down, these numbers here change. So I'm going to move this point to about here. And then with that done, now I'm going to click close and then I'm going to click apply. Okay, now we need to program this exhaust to move to the point that we just made. So we're going to click on new scene events. We want this uh, action that we're about to add to, uh, to add to happen all the time. So we're going to leave the add condition blank. We're going to select add action, go to common actions for all objects, go to position. We're going to select position of an object. The uh, where we see this change the position of an object, that object that's mentioned here is our exhaust. For the modification sign, we're going to select equal For the X position. We're going to click on the blue button. Scroll all the way to the top, select common expressions for all objects, select position, scroll down, select X position, then we're going to left click here and then select player. We're then going to select apply. For this here, we're going to select equals. For the Y position, we're going to click the blue button. We're going to scroll all the way to the top, go to common expressions for all objects, select position, scroll down, select Y position. For the object, we're going to click here, then select player, then apply, then we'll select OK. OK, so we still have more work to do here. We're going to double click here to go back in. For right before the X, uh, after the period, we're going to click here, we're going to hold shift, we're going to put in capital P, I O N T, so point and then here we're going to in between these parentheses that's what I mean when I say here we're going to enter in quotation E capital P and then uh, the rest of the word you know for point we're going to put quotation in there we're going to do the same thing here capital P I O I N T we're going to click here Quotation, E, capital P, I, O, N, T, quotation. Then we're going to click OK. OK, with that done, we should be able to click on our preview button. So now we see that as we move our player around, the exhaust follows with our player. Looks good. Okay, I'm going to click on new scene. So be aware that currently the uh, exhaust is behind the player. So when I click on the exhaust, see this Z order three? And when I click on the player, see the Z order four? The closer you get to one as far as the Z, Z order, the more you go into the background. So because this exhaust is three, this is behind the player. If you wanted to move this in front of the player, you could move this to, to five since the player is four. Just wanted you to be aware of that. Okay, so now you know how to make an infinite scrolling background. You know how to add animation frames to the player as far as having the player move up, down, uh, forward, and back. You also know how to uh, make a particle system and then have that particle system move along with your player. Okay, guys, that's it for the tutorial. For all of those of you out there who like the videos on this channel and reshare them, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And for those of you who are new to this channel, if you like the videos on this channel and you would like to see more, please subscribe and thank you for viewing.